What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another training guide. Today we are going to be looking at one of the most, most polarizing players I think that they've released for the free legends and it is Skolzy, right? I see a lot of bad takes on Skolzy. I see a lot of disrespect on Skolzy as well. I mean one of the best Manchester United players ever. Absolute beast of a player. Unwavering uh, form on B rating. Looks very serious there but I tell you this guy is a bit of a beast lads. I would have loved to get him to try him out. Uh, in a bit more detail uh, on my road to glory, but I didn't get him. Alas, I didn't get him. So we do have him on our Xbox profile, I think. I must train him, train him up and see what he's like. Um, but he's a fantastic player if you play him right. Terrible in certain situations, not good enough, doesn't compete defensively, I would say, even though he gets good defensive engagement and aggression with the build we have for him, because they're good off the rip. Aggression at 81, kick and power at 84, loft to pass at 84. You've got a very good rounded, well-rounded attacking midfielder, center midfielder kind of hybrid there. Now, he can play CMF and AMF, but he can't play DMF or anywhere on the wing. Um, so that is a bit of a problem if you're used to having kind of like versatility in your players, right? But long range shooting, he's got knuckle shot, rising shot, first time shot, one touch pass, weighted pass, pinpoint crossing, low lofted pass and fighting spirit. So he is a good player, right? Don't get me wrong. But I do think that you do have to train him up in a very specific way. And we're going to show you that specific way right here over on eFootballDB. Right, so let's talk about this build. He's got 39 levels to go. He's got 11 into shooting and dexterity. 7 into passing, 9 into dribbling, and then of course we have 4 into lower body, right? Now, the big kind of talking point, or the big selling point of this card here, right, this build, is the fact that we are dependent on his form, his uh, unwavering form here as well, so that we do get the player form arrow, right? We're not going to be really playing Skolzy. As I've said before, lads, right, pretty much all these players that you're getting here, I would say, apart from Drogba, Law, Casillas and Figo, who are the four best in the pack, in my opinion, I think you're going to be playing the rest of them as impact players, right? The rest of them are going to be impact players, okay? So Casillas, Drogba, Dennis Law and Figo, you can actually start them and have a good squad built around them. Maybe Dennis Law doesn't get into that, he's probably a better impact player, but the rest of the players in here, Burkamp, Alonso, Scolzi, Donadoni, Zamorano, Guardiola, all of these guys are going to be impact players. Either they play the first 60 minutes and you wheel them off, or else you bring them on after 60 minutes in the second half, right? So that's just a disclaimer across the board. I think that's probably the best advice that I could give anybody, whether you're a newcomer or you've got a team full of ep epic players or legends, okay? So with Skolzi, we're going to be able to be very picky in how we train him up. We are dependent on his form arrow, and we're dependent on his form arrow boost to get ball control, tight possession, low pass, kick and power, and balance all into the 90 zone when he has the up form arrow, okay? Check out my other videos on that if you don't understand what an up form arrow means. It basically means that when his game, in the game plan, when you see the arrows before the match, before your match screen kickoff, you will be able to have the form arrows and it gets a boost to the stats, okay? So when you leave the stat at 88, you get a plus two to that. All these stats that you're seeing at 88 will be into the 90 zone, okay? So when you do get the form arrow, we're going to have 90 in ball control, 90 in tight possession, 90 in low pass, 90 in lofted pass, or 91 or 92. We're going to also have finishing up near around the 87, 88 mark. Kicking power is going to be in the 90 and balance is going to be in the 90. On top of that, we're going to have aggression at 85 so he can kind of defend and be, you know, very hassling from the front. Kind of like Pedri, except without the dribbling, okay? He's a very similar car to Pedri. Now this build that we've trained up here is all about shooting. If you do not shoot with Skolzi, right, you can completely get rid of that and still have enough in 75 finishing. You can pop one into that, right? He's never going to be a speed demon, but you can actually pop this into dribbling and get his dribbling into the 93 zone and tight possession and ball control in 93. Or else, if you wanted to just leave that at that with the 88, you can actually get five into dexterity who brings his acceleration up to 87. So he is a viable option, especially if you're kind of changing your perspective of him that you're going to be bringing him on as an impact player. But in my personal opinion, lads, this guy is all about shooting. So why bother with anything else? That is kind of where I would pick everything that I would like to go with him, right? Obviously, we want the offensive awareness. We want the balance. We want all of that to stay high. But I'm really going to be just looking to get the finishing up, right? Now, if you're going to be long range shooting, 86 probably is enough because you get the boost then to 88. That is more than enough to shoot from long range because the long range shots... Anyone can score. You don't need a massively high shooting stat to score long range bangers. Um, but I do think for this guy, where you want to, where you want to throw a lot of stuff in, 
is into your kicking power, right? We want that kicking power to be at least 92. That will bring up the stamina as well if you want to go that route. 85 finishing is more than enough, and then I would probably pop one more into dribbling, and then there's your, there's your build. So if you do shoot a lot and you want to test out a player that's going to be an impact player, bring on Skolzi. A lot of people don't expect you to shoot long-range shots, but when you've got the amount of player skills that Skolzi has here, right, and you've got everything that you could possibly want, you've got one-touch pass, you've also got weighted pass, pinpoint cross, and low lofted pass, but then you have the shooting stats as well, complemented by 85 finishing, 83 curl, and 92 kicking power. It is going to be a monstrous card, right? So don't knock it, lads. If you have tried Skolzi, um, and you don't like him, maybe retrain him into this and do take a few shots. As I said, if you don't shoot and you just want him as a kind of a ball playing um, player, you can just really take this and put it at 78, you know, the finishing. You'll still be able to shoot long range bangers with him. They mightn't be as consistent. You will need a little bit more skill, but you can actually train up his acceleration and his balance very, very high there if you want to go that route. You don't need all of this if you're not going to be shooting with him. You don't need that kicking power to be that high. Leave the speed at 70. You'll still have 88 kicking power and you can throw, throw in the rest into it. I mean, he can even go to 90 aggression, which is insane. So I do think that Skulls gets a very hard time. You can train him in a lot of different ways. You can get his ball control and his finishing and everything up fairly high. His passing can be really high. So let me know what you guys think. I'll be back later. Hope you enjoyed the episode of this and I will talk to you in a bit.